topic for today's roundtable is around 2022 reflections, taking account and looking forward. Uh, we, have, we have a great group, group of panelists here today that will be sharing their experience, talking about some of the best practices or things that they've learned from 2022, and also looking forward. What can we look forward into uh, 2023? Uh, we do want to mention that uh, one of our panelists, um, Amid Aziz uh, was unable to join today due to health reasons, and but we do have someone that's replacing Aziz, uh, Dami Ogumala, uh, wealth of experience uh, in the um, Canadian job landscape. She'll be sharing some interesting things with us today regarding um, our experience and what to look out for in terms of the jobs, in terms of the job market, in terms of career growth. Again, this mandate, this forum, uh, it's uh, it's around career growth. Our focal point is around how we can help raise leaders. How can we move the dial? How can we have this conversation around growing as a professional and growing as an individual? Uh, so uh, again, we have this great group of panelists who we're going to be talking to. So without further ado, we will uh, introduce our first panelist. Uh, so at this point, I just want to ask all the panelists to please turn on their cam. Uh, we'll be introducing uh, each uh, panelist. So our first panelist to be introduced is Laura Flesner. Welcome, Laura. Welcome back, Laura. Thank you so much, Ade. It's so great to be here. Awesome. Uh, so Laura, if you want to just maybe uh, uh, start with you, some introduction about yourself so the audience can know who you are and they have an idea of who's on the call. And again, uh, we ask that all the panelists please turn on their camera this time. Absolutely. Uh, this would be great. So uh, it's so great to see you all and, um, you know, well, I don't see you right now unless you have your camera on. It'd be great to see you all. Uh, feel free to put your camera on so we can engage today. I would love that. Um, but otherwise, I'm so glad you're here. Um, I'm really excited to return because I was here earlier at an earlier round table this year talking about leadership. I'm a leadership and innovation coach. Uh, I run my own business at MindTop. And at MindTop, uh, it's my mission to uh, really help professionals, and I call it diverse professionals, um, people who might have uh, inherent biases within the workplace, whether they realize it or not, women, minorities, introverts, uh, support functions, neurodiverse, et cetera, and um, really helping diverse professionals to be seen as leaders, to show up as leaders, and to break those biases to be able to flourish. Uh, so that's what we do at MindTap. I'm so excited to be with here with all of you as we reflect and look forward both today. Excellent. Well, we're, we're excited to have you, Laura, and I'm excited to get into the conversation. Again, we're, we're going to be talking about some very, very interesting things today around, uh, you know, the, the topic, uh, the agenda for today. Um, so we're going to get back to you, Laura, uh, uh, momentarily. Our next panelist to be introduced uh, uh, is Dami Lola Ogumala. Welcome, Dami. Hi, everyone. Uh... It's very lovely to e-meet you, just like Laura said, those people who I can actually see on camera. Uh, and to e-meet you, those people who I can't see, but I can see your names um, on the screen. It's very lovely to be here, um, although last minute, uh, but I, I believe that it was for a reason. I'm very excited to be learning and uh, meeting everyone. Uh, so I am a national recruiter on behalf of EY, but everything I say today will be my opinion. Um, I also work with uh, immunication as well. So immunication is it's very similar to what um, Ole Consulting does. And it's amazing to see so many people in the landscape of trying to help newcomers to Canada, uh, because for a very long time, a lot of people, you know, moved to Canada and didn't really know what to do after moving, didn't know how to express their skills. Um, and it's great to be here because that's at the intersection of um, where I work I, as a recruiter. I really, really love to help people understand the Canadian uh, job market and how to express their skills. So I'm not really trying to get people to fit in. I'm trying to get people to express how their skills can provide a different perspective and a different opportunity for organizations. Uh, so that's essentially uh, what, what I'm passionate about. And the organizations that I work with, both um, as a full-time job and as a part-time job on the site. 
Excellent. Well, and, and we're really uh, grateful to have you here, Dami. Um, I know Dami Lola is on it, but you, you, you're fine with us calling you Dami on this call, right? 100%. Like, no one ever calls me Dami Lola or Oluwa Dami Lola because that's so long. Imagine if I was in trouble with my parents and they're like, Oluwa Dami Lola. Before they say that, I'm gone. Hey, so even my parents, really <laughs> everyone calls me Dami. So All right. you're 100% fine. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much once again, Dami. And we're really excited to have your unique perspective on this call. And uh, yeah, looking forward to the conversation. Um, our next panelist uh, is a regular on this roundtable um, and is one that has been uh, someone that speaks volume around mentorship, around leadership, around how you can get ahead. So I'll let him introduce himself, Anthony Afalabi. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you very much. It's good to join again. Um, it feels like it's been not it's been a year ago that we did the last one, didn't we, Ede? Um, and so now, you know, we're at, at the last, uh, it was always a great time, really and truly, uh, being part of this session. Thank you for the opportunity. Hello, Dami, hello, Laura. Looking forward to a very interactive session, everybody in the call. Um, my background is in consulting and financial services. I, myself, immigrated from um, England to Canada and lived there for eight years. Worked at EY actually down uh, for a while on Bay Street and then did the whole four bank, did the rotation, Scotia, CIBC, and so on and so forth. Um, particularly like uh, how Adi chooses his topic all through. So he kind of senses what's going on in the kind of, in the environment. And then, so this particular one, what better time to talk about reflecting this year and looking forward into 2023 as well. So um, looking forward to chat with you, um, talking through practical mentally, you know, uh, um, opportunities and things to look out for even in our real life and how to get ready for 2023 career-wise and, and life-wise but really 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 appreciate it thank you Ade. Yeah. Okay. all right well thanks so much anthony and uh again we're excited to have you back here um and excited to have this conversation uh so before we get into the conversation i uh, just want to you know provide some context into what we're going to be talking about uh i think it's the time of the year where we want to reflect on what's going on in the Canadian job landscape. And some of the things that we've learned over the years is, uh, over the past few months, is uh, we understand that earlier in the year, um, there were folks uh, talking about the shortage of talent in the Canadian market and, uh, you know, conversations around why individuals need to upskill and reskill to be able to address, fill the gap in the Canadian job market. And, and we had folks, and interestingly, we had some folks uh, working multiple jobs because there were so many jobs and, and you know, there weren't too many people, to enough people to fill those jobs. And more recently, the reverse is the case. Uh, we're learning that uh, there's an economic, economic downturn, uh, which has led to some layoffs. And, um, you know, question is, what can we learn from that? Uh, you know, initially we're talking about there's a lot of jobs. There's not too much, too many jobs for, uh, and they, they, we didn't have enough people to fill those jobs. Now we're saying there's the layoffs, uh, especially notably with some of the big uh, organizations, big tech organizations. So some of these things we want to talk about, want to unpack them. Um, we also we've also seen some reports from. Uh, the likes of uh, IMF, uh, Deloitte, uh, talking about the economic outlook uh, in 2023 uh, being positive. And there's some other reports that uh, are reporting otherwise. So it's, it's, it's my mixed information here. Uh, and we're wondering, what can we what can we learn from this? We're looking at professionals overall. What can professionals learn from this? And if you're a new immigrant and you're new in the country, what can you learn from it? Or if a professional trying to navigate a new career, what can we learn from this? How should we position ourselves for this uh, new uh, current atmosphere? So we're going to get into the conversation again. This conversation is going to, going to be very interesting. Uh, so to get started with the conversation, uh, we will exit presentation mode. Let's see what's on the call. Let's see. Let's see all our faces. Um, uh, we, you know, we'll get to talk about this uh, very interesting uh, topic. Um, and, and the first question I'm going to address, we're going to be talking about today, I uh, will be addressed to uh, Dami. Uh, Dami, we'll have you lead, <laughs> open the floor today. Uh, perhaps you can help us uh, unpack this very, very interesting topic around um, some of the things that we've learned. What can we learn, you know, based on your background as a, as a senior recruiter at uh, EY, what can we learn from 
uh, the market today. We know earlier in the year, we talked about resource constraints and the need to fill uh, those gaps. But now we're talking about layoffs, and notably with the likes of Twitter, Facebook, Shopify. Uh, so what insight can one gain and how can, how can we position, every professional position themselves for 2023? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ade. And I think it's a difficult one. I, I'm not usually one to get into trends, to be honest, because uh, no one can ever see the future. We can only always guess and estimate from times past or, you know, what we're looking at. Uh, so I'm not going to be predicting any trends uh, to anyone. Uh, but what I'm going to be saying is that everyone should just watch the market, uh, comparing it to the housing market when people were selling their houses like hundreds of thousands above asking price, especially in Canada. And now prices are coming much lower than even asking price. And I think it's the same with the job market. Now, even though people are getting laid off, it's very interesting that the government of Canada as well is saying that uh, students can now work more than 20 hours a week because there's a shortage of jobs. So just like you said, Adi, you're like, okay, which is it? Is there a shortage of jobs or there's no shortage of jobs? What is going on? And I think that it would depend on your industry. I think that even with the layoffs, we're seeing them skewed towards a certain group of people, whereas another group of people have, you know, have jobs that are too many for them to, to account for. Uh, so what I'm going to say and how you can position yourself is to make sure you have your resume up to date. You don't want to start looking for a job when you've been laid off. I think that that's not a very wise thing to do for yourself and your peace of mind. So make sure you have your resume up to date. Make sure you start having conversations. I get people reaching out to me on LinkedIn all the time and saying, you know, can you refer me? And even though I want to refer you, refer us like a double-edged sword, if I refer someone who is not really a good fit for the job, it sort of reduces my credibility such that if I refer another person, they're like, ah, the last person you referred was not really any good, so why should I take this one seriously? So I want to refer people that I actually know are good for the job. And the way you can tell me that you're good for the job or I should refer you is if this is not the very first time I'm meeting you ever. Like, don't just send me your resume and say, hey, refer me. If you've been engaging with my post, if you've, you know, if we've chatted before, we've had conversations, then I feel more comfortable referring you. That's the second thing. Number three, you want to start talking to people to know what you like and what you don't like. Again, I've seen uh, many times when people get laid off or even when they want to change industries, they're not really sure what they want. And one of the very best ways to find out what you want is by talking to people okay in talking to people you find out what you don't like to do because sometimes you think oh i'm gonna make a really good nurse and then you find out what nurse is doing you're like okay i'm going to be a terrible nurse but the the only way you could have known that is sometimes to ask someone who's a nurse to tell you what a day in their life is like and then you can know if you can be a nurse or not. Um, so I think that those are some of the things you can do. So dust off your resume, don't wait till the last minute. Uh, start talking to people, have conversations. Uh, so people can know, ex so you you yourself can know exactly what you want. And so people can even know you're open because that's another thing. All the jobs I've gotten in Canada, I've gotten through referrals and people would have not referred me if they didn't know I was open. I love my job. I'm happy where I am. Um, and I'm sure that that's probably the case for most of you. But at the same time, you don't want to shut the door on yourself because sometimes layoffs, most of the time, layoffs are not personal. Organizations need to make the best decisions for themselves. And sometimes that means cutting people out and even though you love them and they love you sometimes they have to let you go so instead of waiting till that time to start scrambling you want to get ahead of it so what is the trend like circling back to your question Adi, the trend is that um i don't know i'm not going to be able to predict that one uh but i think we should all be ready for the best and the worst um of next year because even though you don't get laid off you may want to take another job and you want to be ready to be able to take that job if, if you know, you need to. So I'm going to uh, put a pin on it here. Hmm. Thanks so much, Sami. And it's interesting. I guess, I guess the key takeaway here is um, networking, uh, the power of networking, uh, putting yourself out there and, uh, you know, connecting with folks that um, can be instrumental in helping you land the next job. Uh, thanks so much, Dami. And again, we don't really know what's to come. Again, there's there's so many predictions out there, uh, but we can only guesstimate on uh, what we based on what we know so far, and perhaps uh, position ourselves for the uh, for whatever it is to come. Um, so we're gonna stick with this question. We're gonna stay here. Uh, we're gonna stay with with this question, uh, this line of thought, and I'm going to you, Laura. Uh, Laura, I guess perhaps uh, given the current state of the Canadian job landscape. Uh, 
what can we learn from it? How can the average professional position themselves uh, for what's to come? It's, uh, yeah, it's a tough time with layoffs, economic downturn. It's a time of winter. Uh, and yeah, okay, so it's winter now and it's cold, but that's not what I mean, right? Winter is more of a tough time. And uh, believe it or not, the market economics has the same cycle of seasons, uh, just like the, the nature outside. And winter does come to an end. Winter does come to an end and spring begins where there is growth. And then summer where there is bountiful, plenty available. Um, so what do you do in the season of winter? I think of winter as actually a time of great opportunity for individuals, because this is a time where most people then kind of like sit back and wait, right? They kind of go into hibernation. But if you take this opportunity now to be able to invest in yourself when other people are just waiting, that's where you are going to go ahead. This is a time for you to, to upskill, to be able to develop yourself, whether you have the opportunity in a job and your role right now or not, but taking that ownership of your development, this is the perfect time to do it. Um, and what do I mean by that? When I say development, a lot of people go to training, right? Getting a new certification, um, which all those things are really important, but I call those hard skills. And so um, I like to go towards other forms of personal development um, because a lot of times we're already mm -hmm. skilled in hard skills. Uh, so what else can you grow in? I think actually reading books because books give you an available um, library of multiple perspectives, right? And I think we don't take advantage of that library that is really available to us on so many forms now, um, whether that's literally books in a library. Um, we have audiobooks now. We have uh, podcasts available all over the place, right? But I think that diversity of perspective can be so powerful because then you can start to connect to what makes sense most for you personally and also try on some things that maybe you haven't tried before and understand whether it's good or not. Just like Dami uh, had said about, you're not sure if this thing is for you. Asking someone about it is a really important way to do it, but actually literally trying it on in a way is even more powerful because then you get to experience it. Um, and so I think books allow you to be able to get additional realm of perspective, to be able to understand what you want to try on. Another place to learn beyond books is um, people you admire. And so looking at other leaders, whether they're influencers in your industry, whether they're leaders within your organization, um, whether they're leaders within whatever realm, whether it's your industry or political realm or nonprofit realm that you're interested in or a personal per, uh, passion, understanding what draws you to them. Uh, a, a phrase that I've picked up from uh, Tony Robbins is actually, he picked up from Jim Rome is success leaves clues. So if you look at people who are successful or how you define success, right? This person's successful. What made them successful? And they leave clues for you of what you can do. And they're called role models for a reason because you can literally model those clues. And so picking up those clues is gonna be really important to help you move forward and try on those new skills. And a lot of these skills aren't taught in a certification. The third thing that I want to share with you is what it's one that I think um, for me has made the most difference is to lead something, lead an idea, lead an idea that you have or that someone else has that you champion. Because I think that there are a plethora of really great ideas out there, but not 
actually most people don't do anything with them. They might share them with a friend. They might share them even with your manager. But then if they, if they don't hear or have someone else push it forward, then it just falls to the wayside. They're waiting for someone else to do something with that idea. If you take that idea and you push that thing forward, you are learning leadership by doing. And I call this innovative leadership just like thought leadership, right? Thought leadership is a really important form of leadership and it's um, sharing, right? New ways, new perspectives of doing things. Innovative leadership, which we're kind of in the space of innovation, right? Within tech and IT and really what I call innovation is creative problem solving. We all do that. But you can take that to the next level and lead that idea to fruition. And in doing that, you're going to have an amazing story to tell, whether it's building your own brand within the organization you're already in to get you to that next level, or whether it's that next interview that you have, you can tell the story of what you led and what you made happen. Not because you were an expert in something, but because you actually brought people together because usually things happen with more than one person, right? You need people, you bring people together, you lead them all forward, you guide them to what needs to happen next. And then something actually happens, you make something real. Hmm. And that is something that is applicable to any role. So in this time of winter, if you really learn how to do that, that's gonna take you to that next level, no matter where your next level is. Well, super. Well, thank you so much, Laura. Uh, very insightful. Um, again, folks, key takeaway is ownership, ownership of self-development. Uh, Laura, I'm just going to, uh, uh, you know, ask a follow-up question here. Any book recommendations? You know, for me, I'm a big uh, reader of books. Um, I love to read books. I believe in self-development, and I think a, lot, a, a great deal of self-development is true. Uh, reading of books um, again the hard skills are going to be there but but what the huge transformation comes from those other aspects of personal growth I uh, I love this new book that I read this year called Range by Dave, David Epstein um, the idea behind this one is the fact that um, you don't need to be an expert to make a huge impact and in fact in the space of innovation um, not being an expert actually puts you ahead because innovation is literally about making new connections in different spaces. So if you have range, you can be able to connect those dots in other places that no one else does. And so if there's a lot of great examples in that book and he uses a lot of actually brain science, which I'm a huge fan of neuroscience. And so uh, science-based, Awesome and very inspirational uh, range. Yep. Thank you for having that link in there. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. Uh, we're going to keep the conversation going, folks. Uh, uh, we'll go next to Anthony. Anthony, I guess, question for you. We're, we're sticking with the same topic, but through a different lens. Uh, so, Anthony, question for you is for an immigrant professional uh, trying to navigate the Canadian job market, and amid everything that's going on right now, what advice do you have for them uh, in order to get ahead? Thank you. I, I mean, it's always very difficult when you're the last in the panel. Um, I mean, Laura, Davi, you killed it. I've got notes already. So really, 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 really uh, sound. And I'm going to basically pick up points from what I've heard as well. Um, yes, your network is what I'm going to add on to that, for instance. Um, so particularly for Canada, uh, what pe people don't realize, and, and I wanted to start with saying, um, you know, when you say there's shortage of jobs, you have to be sure what shortage of a job that you're after, because the government doesn't see a job like Bay Street job and um, a job down in Anspadina. There's no difference to the government. So it depends on what you really are calling the shortage of the job that you want to start with. But network is important. And the Canadian market is actually quite a very unique market. It's a smaller market by all means. And so what Laura and Dami is saying about intentionality is so important. 
You have to know. And why does success lead to clue, for instance? For you to pick it up, that's actually why it, it leads to clue. And why am I learning? So when I'm coming to a country, you have to look at the trends, for instance, right? Um, what is in vogue? What's your, what, what are you desiring or what industry would you like to be on? What are the roles in that, in, in that for instance? For, for, you know, let's pick financial services. It's massive. It's, it's a whole nucleus, like it's a whole massive object, and then you have to look at the nucleus of it. There's payments, there's investment in banking, there's retail, there's all sorts. So know the market. It's very important. You have to know the market you're going into. The players within the market as well. Sometimes, you know, we, uh, I, I was reading the other day, LinkedIn, currently right now, eight in 10 jobs are being found on LinkedIn networking alone. Not even the traditional uh, recruitment anymore. Um, who do you know? Who are you watching? Again, back to who's leaving clues for you. Um, just like Daniel was saying earlier as well, you know, who are giving you pointers and how much are you following them? I can talk personally as well. So when I was moving from England to Canada, I actually tested with my friends. I put their phone number on my resume and since that sending out while I was in London bit difficult but my footprint was starting to show a little bit before I landed and it actually earned me about seven interviews on this I came on a Saturday I remember and by Tuesday I was ready I had five interviews waiting for me so that's also one you know think ahead um, look deeply be intentional but you know importantly as well is what is the trend saying most of the time we just focus on the sensation in the news or Twitter's let people go, okay? But then, you know, what's different? Let me give you a clue, for instance, with what's going on right now and permanent people have left the company, people still want to do a job. That just means that contractors will come to the company. Is it a time for you to pivot and think about contracting and again, full-time? There's so many things happening. There's always an opportunity every time. In that winter, there's always a Christmas market, for instance. So equivalent of Christmas market, there's always something going on. The winter games, there is something, especially if you live in Canada, you know that's one thing I've learned from Canadians as well, that winter doesn't stop anything. Actually, there's so much more to do just as you do your um, rib fest in the summer. There's always something happening in every season. And we can't say it enough, we can't butter it enough. But I think personal development is another part that I want to mention as well. How have you developed yourself so far? Now, one of the um, issues I found with personal development is the branding, right? People think that a brand is um, meant to be singular. You could represent many brands as you are uh, being flexible to the market. My point is a company has many brands. Why can't you also represent many brands? Most times when people just think about the fact that I study pharmacy and therefore I'm in clinical, I'm in clinical pharmacy, but not really. There's DG Farm, there's re, uh, pharmaceutical retail. There's all type of different branding that you have to position yourself to. And so when you see the industry changing, you think about your facility and think about how do I begin to look at the brand that speaks the most for me in this season? That's the most important thing. And I'll leave that there. Thanks, Adi. Super well. Thank you so much, Anthony. Uh, again, a uh, lot to unpack. Uh, we appreciate that uh, insightful uh, share, uh, Anthony. And, and I just want to mention that we want to make this as interactive as possible. Uh, if you are escaping, if you're not speaking, please put your mic on mute. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, we want to make this as interactive as possible. Please send your questions through the chat. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to, uh, if you have questions for uh, individual panelists, feel free to address it to them. Or if you want to direct your question to other panelists, feel free to do so. So we're going to move on to the next set of questions. Again, this is going to be interesting. We still have a lot to unpack here. Uh, next round of questions, we're going to go, we're going to start with you again, Dami. Uh, so next question, Dami, uh, as, a, as professionals, what should we be looking out for while reviewing and retrospecting our goals for the year? Again, the whole point of this, uh, this uh, roundtable topic is around 2022 reflection. And we've talked about the Canadian landscape, the Canadian job landscape. But now let's talk about the folks, the individuals. What can we do? What, what should we be looking out for while reviewing and retrospecting for uh, on our goals for the year? Thank you very much, Adi. And I'm going to I'm going to answer your question, but before I do that, I want to answer a question you didn't ask me uh, because I have 
the mic and I'm un unmuted. Uh, but I just wanted to say uh, back to something I said uh, previously in the first question, I just wanna say when you're networking, a lot of the times people wanna network with recruiters and that's great. It's our job. We love talking to you, as you can see my recruiter um, headset. We love talking to you, but more beneficial for you may be to talk to people. And I know I mentioned this, but I wanna emphasize it, to talk to people who are actually doing the job. So as a recruiter, I recruit for neurodivergent folk, for example. I have never, I'm not neurodivergent, okay? I've never done the job that you're gonna do. I recruit for um, quality and risk management. I've never done the job before. Uh, so you're asking, how do I recruit for that job? The way I recruit for the job is that I get given a list of requirements that I'm to look for on your resume. And if I see those requirements, I'm able to pass them on to the hiring manager. And that's how I'm evaluated on whether or not I can do my job, how well I can interpret the needs and pass on resumes that match. Why am I saying that? Because I get people reach out to me all the time and say, you know, how is the day in the life of a quality and risk management person? Like, or, you know, how can I get into quality and risk management? And I really want to help you. I do, but I, not the best person to help you because that's not my job. If you ask me about recruitment, 100%. Ask me about HR, 100%. Talent, I can help you. But you see, asking me about a job I've never done shows me two things. That you probably don't really understand what I do or you didn't take the opportunity to go through my bio. And number two, I don't think you're ready. Um, and I, I know that sounds a bit harsh, I've been known to be harsh and blunt, but I, I, I want to believe that sometimes you know, going direct is the way. So as you're networking, make sure you're reading people's profile. Don't just say, hey, give me a job. Or, you know, hey, refer me. Like, read people's profiles, know what they're about before you then network and reach out to them. And as much as you want to reach out to recruiters, try also reaching out to people who actually do the job that you want to do. Because just like Anthony said and Laura said, that's when you can actually get to the meat of what is done, okay? Uh, that, that's, that's how you get to... Uh, to understand what is, is really going on. Okay, now to the question I did actually asked me. Um, how do you re retrospect? I'm sure everyone thought I forgot the question. I, I didn't, um, I remember. Um, how do you, when you're looking back and you're retrospecting, how do you do that? And one of the ways I, I say to people is, and you can apply this even to interviews, like if you've had an interview, you know, after every interview, not only at the end of the year, you look back on everything, you take everything as a whole. You think to yourself, what went very well, okay? And what went very badly? And what went okay? Because sometimes we focus so much on what, what went badly and we cannot look past it. We're so sad and we're down and we're unhappy. We're like, this was the worst year of my life. This was the worst interview I've ever done. And we forget that some things did go well. Uh, so I would say, first of all, you want to commend yourself for the things that did go well. Look at what went well and focus on doing more of what went well, okay? This is what I did really well, so this therefore I'm going to continue doing it. If it still applies, sometimes something went very well and it doesn't apply anymore, you can chuck it away. Now, what didn't go well, okay? You wanna see what didn't go well, but don't just say, oh, this didn't go well and it's horrible. Why didn't it go well? What was it about that situation that made it so bad what was it about the situation that could have been better and then write these things down so both what went well write it down what didn't go well write it down as well um and then what can i do to make it better don't just stop at oh this was horrible it went wrong what can i do to make it better and like laura said you can listen to podcasts about that you can watch a youtube video you can read a book you can ask questions okay, to make it better. So that next year, you're not in the same position and you're like, oh my God, this was really, really bad. So I talked to my mentor, um, a couple of, um, which is exciting. This is like one of the very first times I'm able to say I talked to my mentor. I've always wanted one and I never had one, but now I have one. Uh, so I am excited um, about that. But I talked to my mentor um, a couple of days ago and he was just talking about goal, set, goal setting and outcomes. Now, that's the, the, the third step in the process. Now, what went well, what didn't go well, and then what are my goals? Okay, because you want to know what to do going forward. And then he was saying, when you set a goal, you want to think about the outcomes as well. Because when you know what the outcome should be, you know how to get there. 
Okay, so, so for example, if you're saying, oh, this year I want to lose some weight, which most of us said in the beginning of the year, I don't know if anyone achieved that. I know I didn't. Uh, but if you just say, oh, I want to lose some weight, that's too much of a broad generic goal to help you. But if you say this year, I want to weigh X, Y, Z. Oh, you guys thought I was going to say weight. I'm not going to say it, so you can't guess my weight. Say so this year, I'm going to you know, weigh X, Y, Z, or this year, I'm going to lose X, Y, Z amount of pounds or kilograms or whatever. That's better because then you have an outcome in mind and you can work towards it. But most of the time, our goals are not smart. And I know this sounds cliche, but our goals are so generic. And so you never meet them. And you cannot even, if your goals are, if your goals are not outcome-based, you you have no key indicators. You have no idea if you met your goals or not. Most of your evaluations will be sentimental and emotional. But if you have key indicators, like how we used to do math in school, and maybe you failed in the answer, but when you like showed your steps, you got like three out of five. But if you had just looked at the answers, you would have failed. And it's the same way with your goals. If you have key steps to get to your outcome, you can measure much better if you met your goals or not. So when you're doing your retrospection this year, maybe you didn't set measurable goals. Maybe that's one of the things that didn't go really well. That's okay. When you're going into next year, try to set measurable goals so that when you're looking back at the year coming, I'm hoping that you'd have been able to achieve more of your goals because now they're measurable. And even if you didn't, now you can better understand what you could have done uh, better going forward. So I would say that that's what you can do, you know, to retrospect, do a gap analysis, what went well, what didn't go well, and then how you can make it better going forward. So I see a day you're muted, so I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> well, thanks, so much, Um, You know, it, it's interesting. Um, one thing that you mentioned that really uh, resonated with me is um, uh, taking account of what went well. Uh, it's interesting because often we, we focus on what didn't go well. And it's interesting, and and even in a day, you might have accomplished ten goals, and there may be two things that you weren't able to accomplish. But we focus on those two things. So it's really important, uh, in order to build momentum, uh, let's celebrate those small wins, uh, the things that you they're working out. Uh, I think that's really uh, powerful, and of course. Having smart goals, having having those KPIs uh, is extremely important. Thanks, Madami. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna keep going. Uh, still, a lot to talk about. Uh, we're gonna go to you next, Laura. Uh, Laura, you know, speaking as a leader, uh, you're the CEO of your own company. Uh, looking back at 2022, uh, in retrospect, what were some of the things that that worked for you, and what didn't work, and how can others learn from that? Mm, yes. It's such a great question. And in preparation for this, I did my own reflections and um, loved that opportunity and pushed to do it. Um, and before I get into that real quick, just to add on what Dami was saying about the negative focus, just wanted to say, that's actually a bias that's wired into our brain. That's literally how our brain works is it help, it wants us to focus on the negative because those are the threats. Those are the things that, um, within you know how evolution has worked it's if it helped us to keep to stay alive so we have to be super intentional like anthony mentioned to be able to override that because these threats aren't the same as far as how they were in the past for us evolutionary right we need to be able to focus on the positive and this is a huge part of being able to maintain mental health so i just wanted to put that little plug in there and why it happens it happens to everybody because it's literally wired in our brain okay reflection was super powerful and um i just wanted to share real quick a process that i use uh, because i actually do this every week I do, I take, I literally schedule reflection time for myself. And what I do is I have a process, it's actually an innovation process that I apply to myself because I think it's important for me to continue, continue to innovate myself, to continue to evolve and grow. And so that process is in design thinking, um, but I've kind of renamed the steps. It's create, test, adjust. And then you go back based off of what you adjust, you, you create again, you test and you adjust and it's a cycle. 
Okay. And so for create, create is literally about creating those goals and creating those outcomes that you're looking towards, just like Dami had mentioned. Okay. It's important to have that. That's what you create. The test is in order to reach those goals, you have to take actions. You have to test your way there. And so the tests are literally the actions that get you towards those goals. And then the adjust is, okay, based off of those actions you took, is that actually getting you close to your goal? Is that the right path forward? And it's important to stop and reflect on that because we'll set a plan and we'll go towards that goal and just stick to the plan no matter what happens. But what that goal that you're trying to create doesn't come with a blueprint. The goal you, the, the plan you created to get there is a sort of a blueprint, but you don't know if that plan is actually the right one or not. And you learn your way through it. So it's important to have that stop and adjust period to go back and recreate the actions that based off of what you just learned through what you just experience to keep going forward and optimize. Right. And so that's literally what I did for my reflections. Um, and one of the things that I learned um, as a business owner, I got, I got really frustrated. Frustration is a key indicator for me. It's an, it's an emotion, but that's a signal for me to say, okay, wait, something's not working. I need to stop and adjust. And so I looked at that frustration. I realized the frustration was stemming from the fact that I wasn't going as fast as I thought I should be. My business isn't growing as fast as I want it to be. And I had to go back and look, okay, why is that? Um, well, I realized that I wasn't reaching my goals because I needed to look at my life holistically. As a business owner, um, I'm also a mom of three kids, right? 11 year old, uh, nine year old and a seven year old. And they just are in the thick of activities, right? There's sports, they're learning instruments. Um, two of them jumped to advanced math this year. So there's homework to really go through. And that's a key priority in my life. Um, in addition to that, my mental and physical health is really important for me to be able to do both my work and be able to be there for my family. That's another key priority for me. And what I realized was that I needed to readjust my priorities, not in the fact that stop doing one or stop doing one separately. But when I was setting my business goals for my business, I was thinking of just my business in a vacuum. And if I just focused on my business, yeah, I probably would have reached those goals. But in reality, I have these other priorities that I want to take time away from my business to do. And so when I stopped and looked at that, I readjusted my goal, not how I did things. Because for me, that's based off of what was important. Now, not all of you are business owners. So how do you take this as far as what, how might this story help you? Well, I think it's the same with multiple projects, right? If you're in work, you're going to have multiple projects you're working on, right? And so a lot of times I did this too, where I would look at a certain project and I'd set a goal for that project, but that's looking at that project in a vacuum and not looking at the other priorities I have within my job that's taking time as well. So if I focus on just that project, yeah, I can reach those goals. But in reality, I had a lot more I was doing than just that one project. And so that was a key learning or just, you know, it was a reminder. Okay, sometimes we have to learn lessons more than once really to really get it. Um, it was a reminder of that lesson for myself in my reflections. Hope that's helpful for everybody. Well, thanks. Thanks, Laura. Uh, very, very powerful. Um, and it's interesting. Uh, we're human. And, you know, a lot of people, we, we have goals and we have aspirations and we have these work things, all these different projects. And most people, you know, I think we have to put into considerations, uh, no matter how big your goals are, you have to have the balance. I think the balance is key. And I love the, the key nugget, create, test, adjust. 
uh, extremely important. Uh, no matter how big those goals are, uh, always review, readjust your goals and ensure that you find that balance. Balance is key. Thanks again, Laura. Uh, we're going to go to you next, uh, Anthony. Anthony, uh, still talking around the self. And in this case, we want to talk to you about your what new habits. Uh, I know you're someone that takes on so many goals. You 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 work with BCG in a leadership capacity. Uh, what new habits or routines uh, did you uh, incorporate this year to improve your efficiency, both maybe at home or at work? Thanks a lot. Um, I'm just. I mean, I feel like I'm not even the panel. Guys, you guys are killing it over now. Thank you so much. <laughs> Um, I, I wanted to speak about some facts before I jump to that question, if that's okay, around how important this topic is. And one of the things that you mentioned as well, well, the reason why I like this roundtable is we always focus on the career, passing as a career, as a career person, and also as a, on a personal development standpoint, which is one of the reasons why I like being part of it as well, because actually you learn from it. Um, so the number of people, a friend of mine sent me this link earlier today, the number of people in Canada with a bachelor's degree have actually gone up by 6.4 6. 4 million in 2001, just so you know that you're in a country where degree and PhD and um, it's not a big deal. Like you're, there's a, every migrant is almost economic migrant, just to, to let you know why personal import, um, improvement and being the best you possibly, possibly can be in such a very competitive market is important. And also newcomers no longer know what to do. And they're saying even Canada is fast losing that reputation as the safest place for um, economic immigrant migrants to go to. Now, back to the question around what do I do as a person um, or just, again, in my journey. It's, it's linked to all the movements that we've done as humans, me moving to Canada or coming from England, coming to England, all of that. Uh, the first thing I thought about when, when I read this question is to say never be comfortable. Never, ever be comfortable. I mean, when I, I thought being in consulting was the was the pinnacle, really, at some point, and, and, and really I got the job on Bay Street, I was at EY, and that was perfect. And, and, and now what, right? So personally, I never get comfortable. Even at this um, stage, I still go for, for um, interviews just so I can tell my, test myself against if I can still be relevant in the market. And I'll say that openly. And sometimes even my, my, my uh, direct uh, managers know, um, you know, I, I just want to see how I can translate, how I can project my brand to someone else. It's all well and good. I work for Scotia Bank or CIBC, whatever. They know me in my team, my department. How can I tell Dami that I do the same thing? I know I tell Laura, basically, and I've been there for five years. So never get comfortable, right? And then even, again, I keep on my like, nuggets from EY. It's one thing, basically, when we get promoted, they say you have to exhibit next level competencies. So you have to actually show what you're doing for the next. So you can't say, for instance, it's a very simple example, timesheet approval or in the project you are taking the lead to talk on the table. For you to actually be able to show promotion, you have to have been doing in the capacity before that conversation. And let me make something, make something clear for you, uh, to you. When you want to get promoted or get um, ratings for your bonus, they actually put your name in the middle of the table. I'm going to say that, I mean your directors and your partners. Your name is on the middle of the table and they say, let's talk about Laura. What do you think about her? The art skill, the soft skill, the smile. Or Danny's, um, you know, um, critiquing and, and how she's balanced between home and work. They really talk about you as a person as a whole at work. So really and truly, the habits that you generate, for instance, is important. Another one is, so apart from internationality, where I mentioned obviously not being comfortable, um, you know, making sure you push yourself, is, you know, picking, and I think I'll go with Danny's point about not going, I want to lose weight, a target, right? I get a lot of emails, and sometimes emails fall within the crack. I like being practical, so I give examples. And so I acknowledge emails or messages almost immediately. Then I go back to respond to it. Yet seeing it reverse. I, I go review, we'll review and reverse. And then I'm now known to be somebody who's speedy, who listens to people. And then sometimes I might have two day lag or three day lag for that email. But because you saw that I've seen it and I've not acknowledged that I've seen it, it also keeps people, gives them that patience to wait for the right answer, right? That's, that's definitely important. So, you know, I, I'm talking about being in work now, but outside of work, obviously don't be comfortable. And then part of the habits as well, you know, even at home is to, um, how do I explain this one? 
make a, make a good call on time. What does that mean? Lateness, for instance, is one I want to pick up. At some point, I was like, I'm missing, missing so much flights. I said to myself, yeah, at some point, my how busy I am, I have to leave something to pick up later. Get up, go. Literally, physically, get up, go. And so the get up, go mentality now can be put into different things. Get up, go, time for job change. Get up, go, time to go catch that flight. Get up, go, time for the next meeting. If you don't talk to yourself about the get up, go, you still go with that normal flat line lagging sometimes. Shall I, shall I not? At some point, so this year, I'm quite pleased to announce that I, I've seen some improvement. I just stop on the tracks and get up and go. You know, it's so important because more and more, and more things are taking our time, you know, from children to, you know, walk up in this case in the season, for instance. At some point, you know, you'll, you just tell yourself, I've got to get up now. And go. I was watching the match previously and I hadn't reviewed some of the thoughts I want to speak about on the round table. At some point, I told myself, get up, go, get on the questions, start thinking about how you can share some good nuggets to people and they can learn today. And I did, did, I did the get up and go. So just in summary, it's being not being comfortable, pushing yourself, you know, getting to some nice habits like being speedy, being known for something. But most importantly, stopping your tracks, get up, go and get it, get, get it done. Okay. Okay. All right. Super. Well, thanks so much, Anthony. Uh, get up, go. I love that. Uh, and I think it's interesting because uh, we build momentum. Um, if I decide to wake up early today and, you know, that little workout exercise, it's an habit and, and it fuels all the habits. Uh, it's almost, it's interesting. And the moment we try not to do those things, we're also building other habits. So it's, it's really, it's a, uh, it's a very interesting one. Thanks so much, uh, Anthony. Uh, we're gonna go to the chat now. There's there's a couple of questions uh, from the uh, audience. I would like to share with the panelists. Um, so we have a question from a Ray Cordray. Uh, first question actually is twofold. Um, number one is, what is the economic or employment landscape uh, going to look like in the BIPOC uh, employees or community? within uh, 2023 and 2024. I think we sort of touched on that earlier, so I'm not sure if anyone wants to take that on. Uh, second part of the question is, given the un unemployment rates is at an at all time low of 5.4%, um, how will quiet quitting and great resignation are going to affect the job market in 2023? So uh, those are two questions, uh, quite technical guys. Uh, I'm not sure who's able to, uh, Anyone wants to jump on this? Any of the panelists wants to jump on this? Uh, the two things we're talking about: the uh, how the uh, you know the employment landscape is going to affect BIPOC professionals, and then we're talking about uh, the second part. Part two of the question talks about how uh, will the uh, with quiet resignation and great resignation, quiet quitting and great resignation, going to affect the job market in 2023? Uh, Anthony, I think you, you you yeah, I could just say you know I think Dami, you started. We don't know. That's the first simple answer, right? But to be honest, yeah, I think in the Canadian market last year and post-COVID was the first time I ever saw movement. Canada, Canadian market has always been that round robbing anyway. So there's no particularly, there's no particularly new. Uh, we call, um, what, do we, what did we say again back in the day? Um, it's a bit of a rotation, isn't it? You see your VP at TD or, and then you he's moved to Scotia Bank and then we just change jobs all the time. So, I mean, I, I don't think anyone should really be so carried away about with, with the 5.4 um, information. At the end of the day, there's always going to be a need. I mean, part of what we're going to talk about hopefully today is what will be trending for next year. But I think particularly, you know, just because um, you that there is a statistic, uh, a, an a figure come out that doesn't affect um, a, a, a job market, in my opinion. But I do think that, you know, um, you have to uh, be an incubator at the moment. I think that's one thing I'd say, you have to be an incubator. So either you're starting something, either an MBA or a certification, or you're starting a network that is going to lead to that breakthrough job or the next job you want, but you just start to incubate right now. So what I mean is establish meetings, coffee, Canadians love coffee, as you know. So you'll go and you know have coffee monthly and then maybe sometime in August, September, July, that job materializes. That's also another way people get jobs all, all the time. So the long and short of that last question is do not stop. Act like normal. Don't be um, 
uh, carried away by that particular news. And for the BIPOC part, I'd say though, for being on so many BIPOC panels, yes, since George Floyd and obviously um, um, inclusive, 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 inclusion, including female gender, and all of those topics that are currently happening around uh, more women, more people of color and background, I think the companies are listening more, um, but they're not responding as much as we want it. One particular case um, is Black, uh, the Black North um, in the initiative, which I've watched very closely. Um, they made some great strides, had CEO signs to signs back in the day when they started up in the thick of things to increase the number of um, you know, uh, uh, DEI type of components into including recruitment um, in their in their um, their different workforces, but it's still not quite um, as cogent. One thing I'll say though is that um, we're seeing more appointments, we're seeing more specific um, areas where they're opening up. For instance, what I mean is if you have more, say, Caucasian white people in a role, and it's like eight of them, now there's consideration to make sure that you make sure that it's uh, balanced across um, the, um, the, the the sphere. But I don't think that um, this re um, companies are responding to it as, as fast as as we wanted it. You know, so again, this this one still remains very um, iffy. However, there's departments, roles, specific C-level officers now for the I topics, and they have the mandate they're running with, and that should help. But I'm afraid in 2023, it's not going to be quite as fast as we imagine it to be. I'll add on to this question too. That's great, Anthony, and uh, you know just. Actually, before I do that, I want to add to your comment of, um, you know, the the change or the lack of change um, acceleration. Awareness is growing, which is amazing. You need awareness before you can change anything. Uh, but the way that our brain works is there's already been biases built into our brains. Those wirings are already there and we're using them whether we realize it or not. Actually, most of the time we don't realize it. Even I have biases that I am constantly working to rewire. And um, we've just been, it's been built in over years. So this change is going to take a lot more than just awareness. It's going to take uncomfortable action, just like you mentioned as well before, Anthony. We can get on this topic a lot more. I'd love to, but the, that wasn't also the question. So I'm going to get to the question. Um, First, I just want to give a shout out to Marianne, Kate, um, Eodeji, and Tomi for having your, your video on. It's great to see you guys. Uh, the comment I want to make about jobs in the job market, I don't know the prediction either. I don't even want to try on that. But but one thing that I did see recently, if you guys, maybe you've tried it, the Lenza app, the AI portrait thing, you've seen that on, on um, social media with the new things, right? That is like a crazy new innovation out there. Um, I don't know if you've heard, but even crazier is chat GPT. I didn't hear about it until I read about it in a news thing that I had, but um it actually, so it's a chat thing that where you type something in, there's an automatic AI response. And a lot of times it's on point and no, no matter what the topic, right? Um, so like, tell me a joke, uh, write a recipe for pecan pie in the style of a pirate, <laughs> right? Explain long division to a 10 year old. And um, it reached 1 million users in five days. Whoa. Because Instagram took 75 days. Spotify took 150 days to reach 1 million. And so just saying like the application of these new technologies is getting to be really amazing. And um, AI, right? Technologies, these are taking jobs potentially in the future, right? So what I want to mention is a lot of the jobs that these, uh, no, it needs to be worked on. Totally agree. This is still just the beginning. There's a lot, there's a comment in there about chat GPT. A lot needs to be worked on. There's a lot that needs to go there, but you can see the, the starts of it, right? My point here is the, a lot of jobs that these technologies are going to be taking is in the area of knowledge and expertise because computers can do that so much better than human brains. 
as far as how it works computationally, memory recall, and things like that. But the jobs that are not going to be taken is leadership, is bringing people together to create, to do things and make change in the society, in the world. And so if you want to upskill, right? If you're thinking about the job market going forward, yes, you're gonna know, you're gonna need to know an, enough of a certain expertise to be credible. Absolutely, that's required, but you don't need to get degree after degree after degree. After you get a certain knowledge base, the thing you want to upskill on is leadership. And what is leadership? Leadership is 80%, I want to say like mind mastery and soft skills, 20% hard skills and strategy. And so being able to learn how to connect with people, being able to tell a story that inspires and motivates, being able to influence others without positional authority, right? Those are the types of skills that will keep you relevant no matter what job you're going to be in. So that was my comment to that question. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, excellent. Well, thanks so much for the share, Laura. I'm not sure, Dami, if you want to chime in or if you want to just move on from that uh, question. I feel like uh, Anthony and Laura have done a great job. I don't want to beat a dead horse, so just let us uh, move on from that okay. one. Okay, excellent. Well, uh, well, 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 you know, we're running out of time here, and and we still have a couple of questions to go. Uh, and I'm just going to create your indulgence, uh, the panelists, uh, for this uh, next round of questions. If we can just keep it to a minimum of uh, two, a maximum of two minutes. Uh, so I'm going to start with you first, Dami. Um, the next question is around uh, transitioning, because uh, there's a lot of folks on this call today uh, that are in the, in, the, in the process of transitioning to one job or the other, and, and they're trying to navigate. Uh, a lot of people, new immigrants uh, coming into this country, uh, often find themselves in this situation where they have to navigate and transition into a new job, a new environment. Uh, so question for you is, what transitions did you make this year um, did you get a new job, et cetera? Uh, what sort of a challenge did you encounter as a result of the transition? And what can others learn from your transition? Okay, I'm going to take the answer to your questions backwards, and I'm going to try to give it a second, just because of a comment I saw in the chat. Uh, so I think Ray, uh, thank you for your comment, actually. Ray said uh, to something I said before, you can refer them to the risk management professionals in your network. And while that is dandy when I was saying, oh, don't reach out, to a recruiter to, uh, for those of us who maybe got lost, uh, don't, you know, reach out to people who did the job. And I, Ray, I understand this is a nice thing to do. Uh, but one thing I've learned from transitioning is that you cannot give other people a responsibility for your life. You cannot, you have to take ownership for it. It's very easy to say, oh, you know, why don't you do this for me? And why don't you do that? And it would be nice. Uh, but the truth is no one owes us anything not a recruiter, not the hiring manager, not the leaders in our lives. No one owes us anything. They can't do it for us if they're nice. Uh, they can help us um, if they want to, uh, but no one owes us uh, their help. And people are more inclined to help you when they feel like you've put in the work. I'm not gonna help someone who I feel like is depending on me to do stuff for them, but uh, I've heard, I've heard it. I think Laura just said that, except I was in a dream, but like no one wants to help someone who doesn't want to help themselves. Um, you you want to help yourself so that other people want to help you. Okay. So that's why I'm saying I'm taking your question uh, backwards. Uh, that's what I've learned from my tra transition. So how did I transition? Um, I didn't transition in a job per se uh, this year. I did transition late last year. So I've been one year in EY now, and I moved from a smaller organization to a bigger one. One where I, I was, I, every, all the steps were literally laid out for me um, in that organization. This is what you do here. This is what you do there. I didn't really have innovation. I didn't really have anything. Everything was just given to me what to do, right? To an organization like EY, where you have to learn a lot. 
I didn't really talk to leadership in my previous organizations. And now I'm in an organization where I have to talk to partners every day because I'm a recruiter. I have to talk to candidates. I have to talk to clients. I had to talk to a whole bunch of people. I had to talk about talk to people about their salaries. I had to talk to people about so many things I didn't have to talk to them about before. And it was a bit challenging because it doesn't appear so on this call, but I can be shy um to talk about those kinds of things i i can have a lot of anxiety i'm in therapy uh for anxiety that's tmi but just so you know i'm in therapy uh for anxiety so it was it was really uh, hard for me to to just say my mind and also coming from a culture where people who are older than you are in a more leadership uh, in a leadership position from you are always right and then now you're in a culture where it's like oh no they're not always right you can have a conversation you can have an argument with them so that was a huge huge tradition for me culturally job wise in so many different ways and it was really challenging because every time my boss sent me a message I was like oh my god I'm going to lose my job or you know every time my boss like wanted wanted something from you I made a mistake it was like oh my god this is it I need to pack my bags uh, but over time I've learned that that's not the case because first of all I'm in a work environment where I feel safe if I tell my boss that someone is like being mean to me she's going to get on the call with me and fight and that kind of environment I love. I'm, I'm not ready to give, you know, give that up very soon. Uh, but also another thing that really worked for me was that I mirrored people. Uh, so what does mirroring people mean? It's just like if you've never learned to use cutlery before, you watch people use cutlery and use it like them. So I'm not saying become someone else, but I'm saying watch people in your environment. See what they're doing, see how they're reacting to stuff, and then try uh, to mirror the good aspects of you know, what they're doing without losing yourself. Um, it's another thing I do. And I put myself out there a lot. Um, like Laura said, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. I put myself out there a lot with situations that I was, I don't like networking. I tell people all the time, network is great for you and it's great, but I don't like it, but I've done it a lot. Like I said, all the jobs I have is through referrals. You have to be okay with being uncomfortable if you're gonna make tr huge transitions and have them work for you, no matter how challenging uh, those are. Those are just a few of the things I've done. And again, I see Ade on muting, so I'm gonna mute. Um, and then we can talk about this maybe some other time. Oh, well, um, thank you so much, Dami. That's excellent. It's, it's interesting. You and I had this conversation um, and, you know, there's a lot that we can unpack out of this. Um, and, you know, just want to say thank you. Thank you. And we you know, also want to uh, say to our audience, thank you so much for joining, you know, this panelist. Uh, they, you know, they've taken time out of their own uh, private weekend to join us to share. Uh, it's not easy to be here to just turn on your cam and start sharing and make sure that you're sharing good stuff. Uh, no, it's not easy. Some folks, uh, it's, I just want to say that. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Um, we're going to keep going. And again, I crave indulgence, Laura, Anthony. Uh, we're, we're about wrapping up. If you can please make it two minutes. And my next question is to you, Laura. Uh, Laura, uh, obviously this part, I really love this question. And I know this is an area where you specialize in. Uh, throughout this chaos, throughout, we've talked about the year, the 2022, uh, lots have happened. Uh, did you take time off for yourself? Uh, what, sort of, what sort of ways did you uh, spend time to unwind? And what are some of the importance of uh, taking time off? Love this question. Mental health is a huge passion of mine personally. And um, it's affected my family and my friends and uh, really want to make sure that this is there's, there's, there's tools for people to use here. So here's what I personally do. There, I do three things. Um, one is I recharge on a daily basis. I put away time for just me to be able to recharge. And so what I do to recharge is, is unique to me because you have to know what recharges you, which is different for everybody. Um, for me personally, I am an introvert. I actually I love spending time with people, but I don't get energy from it. I, I use my energy, like what I'm doing right now. I love it, but I'm using my energy. So I actually going to need more time later today to be able to recharge from it. And so it's literally time alone. And that's also like without my kids, without even my dogs, I have three dogs and just like me time. Okay. So I do it daily because it's about energy management. 
The second thing I do is make sure I take my vacations. For me, this is investment in my relationships and relationships fuel you through the year. And so, you know, I took a family vacation to Hawaii for a wedding, for my cousin's wedding, um, made sure that we went traveling for my son's travel baseball team. That's for my kids. And then um, actually we took a vacation earlier in last January with just me and my husband to fuel that relationship. Um, so, you know, it's also very specific about which relationships I want to fuel. The third thing is um, I renamed sick days for myself to recovery days because that covers both physical recovery and mental recovery. Because there are times where I start to feel burnt out. And you start to realize, like, I have no energy to keep going, even with my daily recharges, like, that's not enough anymore. I just need, I need a recovery day. And that's okay to take. And actually, it's needed because if you're going to be productive, if you're going to be impactful in your job and give quality work, that's required. And so I've reframed it and renamed it for myself. It's not a sick day anymore. It's a recovery day. And I've taken those through the year. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Laura. Um, and, and it's really important to um, take time off to recharge. Um, I love the concept of, you know, translating those sick days to recovery days. Because sometimes we we only take time off when we're sick and when we're not feeling too well. Uh, but why don't you take time for self-care, you know? Mental health is key. Uh, thank you so much for, for that, Laura. Um, I'm going to go next to you, uh, Anthony. Anthony, a final question for this round uh, oh. is looking forward. You know, the mandate of this topic is to take account. I think we've done a great job of taking account. And now we need to look forward. So for professionals out there, what career trends should we be looking out for in 2023? And how best can we position ourselves to take advantage, to take advantage of those opportunities? Yeah, thank you. Um, so I, I mentioned earlier that I, I'm personally thinking that a lot of um, temp to time work will start um, again because of the layoffs. And then so you're going to find out that there's going to be a shortage in your resource. And then so there's something called OPEX and CAPEX. And then you're going to see that you're going to start to um, have funding just from a project portfolio perspective and run for a project. So that's one simple answer. Another thing I'll also advise folks to do is to look through job titles, um, go on things like um, websites like LinkedIn or Indeed and search and look at the tallies of results, total to come back. That tells you how much the jobs are available. But the particular and specific jobs are... Um, Again, you know, Laura's point on, on leadership, I think leadership will always be um, transferable across all the new um, environments that we're looking at. But I think that when I think about the three W's, so the leadership basically focuses on the how, the steer, but then there is the what, the where and the when. Some people will talk about how we do it, which is the what we're doing. Um, and then where it's like the timing, really project management, we do it this milestone and that milestone. And then I think the last one was the uh, the what, the where and the when. So the when is kind of like implementation, which is IT specifically. But I think data, uh, you know, around data engineering, cloud, um, when talking about IT, um, right now it's a, it's a minimum of 20 weeks to even speak to any data engineer. I mean, it's minimum 100,000 to even get them um, to talk to you. Um, data engineers, a person who looks through a, an ecosystem and talks about how kind of systems can be joined so that data can distribute from point to point and for the downstream to be used. So data is a big one. Robotics, AI, and Laurie mentioned that too, massive. Um, you can't, you know, so you can't even talk too much around that. But I think that even in the product delivery level, so every level of product delivery, not just the BA world, I mean, product ownership is becoming more, I see, higher than the sort of typical BA. So I'd see a BA as a generic person, documentation requirements, appeal on the domain, on the product. And when she's talking, like I said, she, Damien, Laura mentioned a lot about um, AI, robots. These are products, even as automated. And when you look at P 
CPO, you are an owner of a product as it's been delivered with a PM and an engineer. And so I think that area, please look into that big time. Um, but most important thing is I'd like you to look at yourself half. What I mean half is where you're coming from, what key transferable skills can go into the other one? That's your half job. And then the other part is what other um, specifics are they noting? So if you notice, for instance, I didn't, I'm watching the time. Um, if you look at uh, job specs these days or job posting, they talked about the company, what you're doing in your role, what the job requires and what you would like to bring in. The last two is very important. What you're bringing in is that last part I'm talking about. That's really where. So when I'm talking to like my uh, HR partners and talking about what I want from the job, there are specific to say in this role you must have X, Y, Z. So the nice to have and the uh, and the must have. So the nice to have is your transferable skills. What are you bringing in? The must have is what is specifically telling you. So I think around data engineering strategy, governance, um, AI robotics, product management implementation, which is going to be importantly as well. If you're a BA, start looking at becoming a PO. And if you're a PM, please start looking to program management. So that way you're not just looking at what line you're looking overarching. And I think that's kind of what time, um, I, I, I think that's going to be a big deal, you know, because there'll be, uh, there's a lot of, um, things cost is a big driver for next year. So I, I want to improve funding for very quick tactical projects that I can deliver. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Excellent. Well, thanks so much, Anthony. Um, yeah. And I just want to chime in. I think in addition to those uh, areas, uh, it's interesting. I was at a business to government uh, forum a couple of days ago and, and some of the government officials, um, Canadian government officials talking about the trends in the Canadian landscape and there's a particular focus on cybersecurity and the fact that there will be more cybersecurity jobs and projects in the future. So that's another area, uh, perhaps maybe the business analyst on the call, uh, you can be a BA, but then you need to have knowledge and expertise in certain areas. Uh, so that's an area to focus on. But I think I totally agree with all the other areas, the PO, uh, data, and all those other areas that Anthony shared. Thank you so much, Anthony. And, and as we're wrapping up, uh, I just want to say thank you to all the, to the panelists. And we're just going to hear from the panelists before we wrap up. Uh, key takeaways, one minute or 30 seconds. Uh, key takeaway from all the panelists, starting with you first, Dami. So 30 seconds. I'm going to say that you probably felt fantastic listening to all of us speak because everyone on this call is amazing, including people who ask questions and people on camera. When you go back, introspect. Okay, don't just leave this place and be like, this was awesome. And then till next year, okay? Take what you've learned, think about it and apply it. That's the only way it can do anything for you. Thanks. Thank you so much, Dami. Uh, we'll go to you next, Laura. Uh, just another echo of what Dami said, but um, in general, as I talked a lot about leadership today, I just want to reinforce leadership doesn't matter your title doesn't matter your position. It's how you show up. So this applies to you and you, right? And, um, and as we've talked about reflection today, leadership or reflection is a leadership tool. All the great leaders do it. And actually taking time to do that and just what Dami said and making sure you act on it not just do the exercise, but what are you going to literally do differently or continue to do and be specific about it? Thanks. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Anthony? Thank you for this session. Everybody's listening. I really enjoyed it. Yes, just building on, on what you said, Laura and Dami as well. Yes, uh, pick something. I think that's what I'd say, pick something and that desire to come forth with into that. And for, you know, um, success leaves clue. We've learned so much about create tests of just get up and go. Um, but most importantly, I think that as the uh, December and festivity is going through, start to think about one thing at least that will drive your desire through the next year and stick with it. Okay, on that note, I uh, just want to say a big thank you to our panelists, um, as well as the participants of today's roundtable. Uh, it's been a very insightful uh, conversation. Uh, we talked about uh, what to look out for in the job market. We talked about networking. We talked about ownership 
ownership of your self-development. Uh, we talked about looking at other forms of personal development, reading books. Uh, we talked about, there's a lot to unpack here today. I just want to I just want to say a big thank you to uh, the panelists as well as uh, all the participants uh, today. I, I know there's a lot going on today. It's a weekend. Uh, we're grateful that you're able to join us today. I know there's a World Cup match going on and folks are able to join us. We're really grateful for that. Uh, at this time of the year, we'd like to wish everyone uh, happy holidays. Um, we will be back next year, uh, uh, January, for our next PM Roundtable. Uh, but again, we do appreciate you taking time off to join us today. There's a lot to unpack today. Uh, we're excited uh, for Laura, Dami, and uh, Anthony uh, joining us uh, again. Uh, we're grateful for all the things that they've had to share. And there's a lot of takeaways here that we can all uh, learn from. Uh, on behalf of the OLED uh, uh, consulting team, I want to say a big thank you to all the panelists and all the participants. Uh, we're wishing you a happy holidays. Uh, be well. Uh, stay safe and bye for now.